Hey everybody, meteorologist Ryan Hanrahan here. We've got some snow on the way. Want to give you an update with the latest thinking on this event. Not going to be a big storm, but for many of us, it is going to be the first snowfall of the season. And some areas could get a couple inches of snow, and it looks like there's the potential for even more than that right along the coast and especially out toward Long Island and New York City. All right, let's dive right into it, show you what we've got going on. So here is the system we are watching. It's moving through the Midwest right now, stretching from Iowa into Indiana and uh, Illinois. It's moving to the east. Now, out ahead of it, we actually have a couple little snow showers that have developed across New York and New England. We could see a few of those this afternoon into this evening, but the bulk of what we're watching is still off to the west. And so that is what we're going to be keeping track of as it moves to the east, and eventually it's going to make it off uh, the coast of uh, the mid-Atlantic, and that's what brings in uh, the precipitation here. Now, as you take a look at the water vapor loop, this is the system. This is the system spinning around over Lake Superior. And what I want you to notice here, because this is sort of important to the forecast, normally when you get a big storm in southern New England or the northeast, or really anywhere for that matter, you get a big dip in the jet stream, and we don't have that right now. Notice the flow here along the jet stream is pretty what we call zonal, pretty much from west to east and so there's not a big opportunity for this storm to strengthen you'd want to see this little swirl here in the great lakes dive south and create a big dip in the jet stream we don't have that so whatever we get is going to struggle to strengthen a whole lot it's going to move through pretty quickly so there is a limit on what exactly this storm can do so again not a big system but it will be impactful nonetheless so uh, here's where things are right now you can see that area of precipitation that i just showed you on radar uh let's move it to the east here this is tonight at 7 p.m you can see that steadier precipitation into pittsburgh back in ohio indiana south of chicago and then it comes to the east then eventually by tomorrow morning that steadier and heavier precipitation is toward us. So this is the green here would be a tenth of an inch of liquid or about an inch of snow between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. And then I'll advance the uh, clock here uh, to 1 p.m. And you can see the storm is offshore, but pretty weak. So you do if you look at the blue lines here, you know you can see there is a bit of a this is the uh, a bit of a dip in the jet stream developing, but it's not enough to really draw the system in uh, and to make things real fun around here. So it's a weaker system, uh, and that's what we've got to work with. Now, what is producing this snow? Well, if you looked at that band of snow that we had from Iowa to Illinois to Indiana, I want you to look closely here. This is the wind at about 5,000 feet above our heads. And notice here across uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota and parts of Iowa, the wind is coming in from the north, but down to the south, the wind is coming in from the southwest across Arkansas, southern Missouri, and Kentucky. So right in between, you've got a band where the wind is basically coming together. And so you get that what we call convergence, so the air comes together and it's forced to rise. And so that's one of the reasons why this system is producing that band of snow. And that happens, you get that convergence out ahead of one of these little upper level systems diving in. And here's the swirl that I showed you. This is the look at the vorticity up at the, uh, oh, closer to the jet stream. There's that swirl. It's pretty, you know, flat looking. It's, it's more oriented east to west here. And then we've got this little system. This is the Alberta Clipper diving south. And that's what's producing that band of convergence. You get some lift in the atmosphere. And so as this moves east, it does sharpen a little bit. You get that orientation to be a bit more north to south. And that's why you get at least some semblance of a storm to form off the coast, but not enough to really uh, go crazy. So, all right, let's go into some of the computer guidance here for southern New England. Really not much of a change with the forecast. We're thinking one to two inches from northern Connecticut and uh, northern Rhode Island up to uh, just south of the Mass Pike, probably two to four for southern Connecticut, southern Rhode Island, southeastern Mass, and there's a chance for up to five or six inches, especially out toward Long Island, uh, down into New Jersey. So this is the GFS. Watch the system come in. There is you know, sort of the bulk of this where you see the green, especially the darker green. That's where you have some heavier precipitation. So down toward Philadelphia, they get a decent little snowstorm out of this. And it all winds down pretty quickly by, oh, let's say, uh, 7... 8 a.m. most of it's over and by 10 a.m. it's gone so this thing flies out and again it's pretty weak by you know Sunday afternoon it's only a thousand millibar low that's that's pretty weak sauce so that's not going to do a whole lot but again this is enough to give us a little something uh, this is the RRFS or the Rufus as we like to call it and this is our new high resolution model that's going to be replacing the NAM 
Um, and it has been more bullish. It sh does show some heavier precipitation farther into southern New England, almost up to the Mass Pike, um, and then slowly the system winds down. I uh, have not been overly impressed with this model, so I'm not... Uh, hanging my hat on it, but it does show the potential for some heavier snow. Uh, the NAM is a little more paltry. You can see um, a couple things here. One, it brings, it tries to bring that precipitation in, but it doesn't really get the, the goods uh, up into Massachusetts at all. Barely gets it into Boston. Um, South Coast gets more. And one thing to note here, I want you to look really closely for me. Uh, from Eastern Litchfield County into Hartford County, then up to Springfield. Notice there is this little area that's sort of, it's almost like a U, sort of carved out here. It does look like there's going to be some dry air in the valley, and that dry air may hold snow totals down. You get some snowflakes to fall, but they sublimate, they evaporate um, as they head down to the ground. So we may see an area, especially Windsor Locks. I don't know if Windsor Locks is going to get a whole lot out of this up toward Enfield and Springfield, because I think a lot of what falls from the clouds is actually going to dry up. Different story, though, along the shoreline, and once you get out, into eastern Connecticut. So total precipitation. Now keep in mind, when we look at this total precipitation, this is liquid water. So we convert the liquid to snow. Generally, we use a 10 to 1 ratio, liquid to snow, to figure out what we're talking about for snow totals. And the name, not much. Less than a tenth of an inch for Boston. Less than a five hundredths of an inch for uh, Bradley. Um, about a tenth of, fifteen hundredths of an inch um, in Litchfield County, and then about a quarter inch right along the I-95 corridor, and closer to a half an inch down toward Long Island, half an inch toward Philadelphia, and quarter to a half inch southeast Mass, Buzzards Bay, out toward Cape Cod and the islands. So that is on the low end of things, sort of the paltry model here. That would be the NAM. The GFS brings it a little farther north, but still has that cutout here of that drier air north of Hartford. So I think this is something that is going to be an issue. Um, so... It may not turn into a whole lot, parts of the Farmington Valley, Hartford up through Springfield, and most of the Pioneer Valley. But once you get south of that influence, you're looking at about a third of an inch of liquid. So think, keep in mind that 10 to 1 ratio, a third of an inch of liquid would be about 3 inches of snow uh, for the south coast, and then over a half an inch out on Long Island. And that 10 to 1, let me put a little asterisk on that. That's We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. Um, Here's the RFS. I mentioned it was the biggest, you know, had the most precipitation, and it's got close to a three-tenths of an inch, almost to Hartford, Willimantic, Providence, Taunton, Mass, Plymouth, Mass, down through Bridgeport, the Hudson Valley, and then over half an inch for Long Island, Block Island, uh, then uh, certainly out toward the Cape and Islands. Um, and then the high-resolution uh, Canadian model, I like to look at this, uh, but, you know, about a tenth of an inch up to Boston, about a tenth of an inch for Hartford, and then quarter inch right along the coast. So the goalposts have narrowed pretty significantly with this one. You know, not a whole lot of a quite, you know, maybe we get a bump north a little bit with this thing. Um, we get some of the heavier precipitation in here, but uh, we shall see. All right, let's take a look here. This is, okay, this is what I wanted to show you. This is the Weather Prediction Center, their model blend. Um, and this is the 50th percentile snow forecast. So this is a probabilistic forecast. 50th percentile has about an inch and a half for Bradley, about uh, close to three inches in Meriden, three inches down in Bridgeport, close to five out on Long Island, about three, three and a half toward New York City, about three out toward New Bedford, about an inch and a half at Logan, uh, about five inches down toward Philadelphia. So this is the 50th percentile. 25th percentile, there we go, um, less than, you know, Less than an inch, Bradley up to Springfield. I think this is probably a good bet. I, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take the under uh, for North Central Connecticut along the shorelines uh, along the I ninety five corridor, about two inches from uh, southeastern Mass toward uh, just south of Providence along the I ninety five corridor in Connecticut, two three inches, and then down three to four New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and then the seventy fifth percentile. Um, this close to four inches along the shoreline. A lot of times when I'm making a forecast, a, a reasonable range, normally you take the 25th to 75th percentile forecast. That tends to be a pretty good range for numbers. So just looking at that, you'd be talking about, you know, generally one to two northern Connecticut and then a two to four kind of deal for southern Connecticut, the southern half of the state. Maybe bumping that two to four north up into, you know, uh, Danbury, Meriden, uh, over toward Willimantic and Providence. Um, so just a rough guess, that's sort of what you'd be looking at here. Um, and so again, here's the system coming in. Again, winds down pretty quickly. This is the HRRR uh, showing that storm moving on through. Uh, the European remains a bit on the higher end of things. So uh, that's 
one of the models we've been looking at here. So bottom one, not a lot from this system. One to two Northern Connecticut, two to four Southern Connecticut. You can extend that east and west into the Hudson Valley and, uh, and Rhode Island, maybe a bit more. Parts of the Cape uh, down toward Long Island and, uh, and New York City especially. All right, I'm going to switch things over here real quick for you. Um, and I want to show you. Let's see if I can go here. All right, here we go. Um, so remember how I was talking about that um, we had the uh, 10 to 1 ratio of snow to liquid? Well, one concern I have with this storm is that we may get a fluffier snow. We may wind up getting a 15 to 1 or 20 to 1 ratio. So if you get 3 tenths of an inch of liquid in, say, Meriden, and you have a 20 to 1 ratio, that would be for every three tenths of an inch of liquid, you get six inches of snow. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but sometimes you get a setup where the snow uh, begins to pile up more quickly for the same amount of liquid water. In terms of the impacts are the same, you know, six inches of fluffy, fluffy snow and three inches of heavier wet snow doesn't really make much of a difference. It's the same sort of same to shovel and plow. Um, it matters to us because people look out the window and think we're idiots because we got the forecast wrong. But it's really just coming up with the density of the snow. It's actually sort of hard to do. Um, I'm going to show you this one computer model here. This is the GFS. And what we're looking at, instead of looking at a map, so we're looking, instead of looking north, south, east, west, what we're looking at is one specific point. And I have Hartford here. And we're looking from the ground, which is down here, all the way up through the atmosphere. Um, and the red line is temperature. The green line over here is dew point. When these come close together, like you see up here, that's where the air is saturated. That's where you've got a cloud and you can get precipitation to form. So I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a second. But what I want to do is I want to bring us to about 5 a.m. Sunday. Again, this is Hartford. One thing to note is that there's a really deep layer here um, from, let me, I can switch this up. Give me one second here, from about, um, let's go. Okay, here we go. From about fifteen thousand feet to about seventy-five hundred feet, you have a seventy-five hundred foot layer where the temperature in the cloud is between minus twelve and minus eighteen degrees Celsius. Why does that matter? Well, at that level, you tend to get snowflakes that develop more efficiently. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. The snowflake production is maximized at that. So you can get a lot of a really efficient snow growth. So the snow grows more easily. The ice crystals grow more easily. And you also get a favored snowflake type. So at about minus 15 degrees Celsius in the clouds, you tend to get dendrites. You tend to get those beautiful, ornate little structures. Um, when the temperature is warmer than that, sometimes you get needles or you get uh, columns or hollowed columns, and those don't accumulate very rapidly. They're very dense. So you tend to get a denser snow, but when you get those dendrites, you can get a real fluffy snow. Sometimes when you get them, you can just you can just blow the snow right off your car, your driveway. You could probably use a leaf blower to get rid of the snow if it's really fluffy. And this tells me that we may have some of that. The white line here, the farther left it goes on the screen, the stronger the lift is. So the air is rising quickly through this cloud and that lift is maximized right at about minus 15 degrees Celsius. So what does that mean? Well, that means there is a potential, I call it this sort of a bust potential here, that because the snow could be extra light and fluffy and because we're maximizing that snow growth right around minus 15 C, there's the potential for a band of some heavier snow um, even away from where the models are showing the heaviest precipitation right at the coast. So I wouldn't be surprised if we wind up getting a real fluffy burst of snow 4, 5, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning just inland from Long Island Sound. And suddenly you're talking about four or five inches of snow in an area we thought might get one or two. Um, and so that's one of the things we're going to look at. T figuring this out is really hard ahead of time. Um, and so uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm so gray. Uh, <laughs> trying to get stuff like this right. Um, so that's going to be a bit of a tough forecast for us. And so we're going to have to try to figure that out and figure out what's going to happen. But again, for the most part, everything's sort of on track. The storm's not crazy. It's come north just enough that I think we're probably going to be dealing with accumulating snow for most of southern New England, south of the Mass Pike, and certainly down into the Hudson Valley, Long Island, and New York City. Um, and two to four for the southern half, 
one to two to the north, and there's a couple of car routes there. You could see a little bit less in the valley north of Hartford, places like Enfield, uh, Windsor Locks, Suffield, uh, where that dry air from Springfield is sort of hanging on. And then again, we'll be watching in southern Connecticut. Can we get with those heavier, if we get enough moisture in here, with the potential for that fluffier snow, with that lift in the clouds maximized at about minus 15 C, then things start to get a little interesting, and you could be talking about um, the potential for a fluffier snow that really stacks up uh, more quickly. But again, uh, not a huge deal. Uh, most of it's going to be before you wake up. Tomorrow morning should be out of here, 7 to 10 a.m. on Sunday. And then it uh, turns out to be a really nice, but really cold day later tomorrow. So, hey, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Make sure you like this page, subscribe to this page. I want to see your comments. Let me know what's going on, uh, where you are, if you've got any questions um, about the storm. Uh, really love to hear from you. And, uh, Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a weather geek with me for the last 15 minutes. Really appreciate it. Whenever we can do this, it's fun. Uh, and I got to get ready, head into work in a little bit. Um, working tonight, filling in. Uh, so it should be a good time. So anyway, hey.